I installed SteamOS on the RG Ally, but not really, and I don't recommend anyone to do it, at least for now. Let me share all of my troubles that I encountered and also all of the positives of essentially using Linux on RG Ally. Currently, if you look on the internet for Linux operating systems made for Steam Deck, then you can only find a handful. I wanted to try Holo ISO at first, but it was not updated for a very long time, and there were no proper drivers, so the RG Ally can't even boot into the operating system at all. Then I had two other choices, either Nobara or Chimera OS. I settled for Chimera because it was actually better as it includes a I don't know this. what is this called, it's just a web wrapper for all of the emulators and also other launches like the Epic Games as well. And this is kind of handy for me so I just went with Chimera. I created the installation USB stick but instead of formatting the entire SSD and boot from the USB stick like what I did with the Tiny11 installation, I decided to plug in the RG Ally to my Dell UltraSharp U4021QW, a super high-end KVM monitor with lots of USB ports and charging at the same time and surprisingly, I can actually boot into the BIOS menu while plugged into this monitor. Since my keyboard and mouse were also plugged into the monitor, then I can use it to navigate around Chimera OS as well, which is something proven to be crucial since there were a lot of menus that only work with a keyboard and mouse. I immediately realized that Wi-Fi doesn't work, so I circumvented the issue by plugging in my phone and using my phone as the network card via USB tethering. Again, the monitor has a lot of USB ports, so I just decided to use one of it for the phone. And this is a very dirty way of doing it, but it works. I installed an updated Chimera OS to the latest version, and then I booted it up. I used the Steam Guide feature to log into my account, and everything was working fine and dandy. I even got Wi-Fi working too, but only for once, I think. I have no idea how I got it to work, but once I restarted the Ally, then the Wi-Fi just went kaput and it never worked again. The audio also doesn't work, so I was literally playing games in silence. However, the audio did work if I select it to output via my monitor. Again, these are just weird quirks with Linux on unsupported hardware. Since we are in Chimera OS, then we are presented with Steam Deck's UI. This is a fantastic UI that is already made optimized for handheld gaming devices, so everything should just work fine, right? Nope. You see, this UI is heavily relying on the Steam button. If you want to take a screenshot, then you have to hold the Steam button and then press some other button as a combination to take a screenshot. And as you can see here, there are just no any Steam equivalent button on the Ally. Heck, we don't even have the Xbox button on the Ally as well. Okay then, I can live without the Steam button as long as we can actually download and install games. To do that, we have to exit the UI and then head into the desktop mode. From here, we can open up Steam and install our games. What if we want to install games from the Epic Games Store? Well, we can launch the something called Chimera and then this UI appears and this is where we will find all of the built-in emulators and also the Epic Game Launcher web wrapper. But we're jumping back to Steam first. I immediately installed a handful of my own personal games ahead in time, Bastion, and also Death Store which is a PC-only game. Surprisingly, all of these games ran fine. However, I realized that all of these games were only at 720p maximum. That is because since we installed this game on top of Steam UI, then it just treats it as the Steam Deck, so all of the games are only running at a maximum of 720p. Now, Dev's Doors is particularly interesting here because it is not so graphically intensive and made for Windows only. It went through the Proton translation layer to run on Chimera OS, and as you can see here, the game actually ran okay, but there are some frame dips here and there, and it's also a bit stuttery here and there. If you're launching the game for the first time, then it will have to build shaders first before the game actually launches. Depending on the complexity of the game, it might take hours, but you can actually skip this whole process and uh, you encounter a lot more stutters while you're actually playing the game. I also installed Shadow of the Tomb Raider for Steam so that we can actually run benchmarks and compare the performance between Chimera OS and Windows 11. Oh boy, this is where things get funky. You see, while we can run games on Chimera OS thanks to Steam's Proton, it introduces a lot of overhead that 
actually impacts your performance directly and that's actually quite a big impact. We are only getting about half the FPS when we compare it to Windows 11. Moreover, we can't even select what TDP to run the Ryzen Z1 Extreme while we are running on Linux. I do think that Camera OS isn't actually squeezing every bit of performance out of the airline since it was actually cool to the touch when compared to Windows 11. And that goes back to the driver issues and also software optimizations that need to be done before actually getting the airline to run on Linux properly. What about the battery consumption then? Well, I can only give you an anecdotal evidence here because I charged the airline to 100%, unplugged it, ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark once and then check the battery percentage again to see how much battery it actually consumed and here are the results. The reason why I said it is anecdotal is because I don't know if the battery capacity is read properly between Chimera OS and Windows 11. If they are, then yeah, Chimera literally took half the power that Windows 11 took but also at half the performance so I'm not sure if it scales linearly but if it does then it doesn't actually matter. Then, I just gave up on using Chimera OS on the Ally. It's troublesome to even get games running and currently, I think any alternatives that are like Steam OS are just not ready for the RG Ally yet. Wi-Fi doesn't work, drivers aren't optimized and the performance are still spotty. With time though, I think and I do believe that Linux distributions that are made for handheld gaming devices will pop up and some of them will be great for the RG Ally. But until the time comes, the best operating system for the Ally as of now will still be Windows 11. Mr. John actually sent me this meme and I think that it embodies my whole experience that I've gone through. And ah, in this case, basic functionalities are still broken on the Ally if you're going to install Linux. And that's it. Not sure what to do with the RG Ally next. Maybe we'll talk about it as a you know, desktop replacement because technically this is a laptop and if you attach an external monitor, keyboard, mouse, then you can convert it to a laptop. Maybe we'll talk about that and do let us know down in the comment section below if you're interested to watch that and we'll see you guys in the next video.